Hello everyone, how is it going? Well, welcome to our, our I think, third, fourth uh, stream in English. It has been a while since our last stream in English, so I will do my best. Um, I have prepared some some things, like I disable feedback on my headphones, that it's something really hard for me, because I don't hear anything outside of my voice. So let's try. Uh, we got the whiteboard, and the whiteboard got banned with him. So let's uh, let's read. Uh, how do I do this? Is this one? Okay. Hello. How's it going? Hey. Yeah, it's going well. Sorry, I'm in. Sorry, I'm in my guest way. Or no, <laughs> this way. There we go. I know you invited the whiteboard. I'm just here to place emotional support. You know. Let uh, me. Uh, uh, just talk so I can adjust your... Yes. I think we're, is we're this... good, right? I think we're good. Or I'm hopeful. Um, yes, perfect. Well, people hear you well. If they don't, they will tell. So perfect. Well, Ben, uh, welcome. And do you oh. want you to tell everyone who are you and who is the white world and who is that happy face behind you? <laughs> Yeah, totally. Um, so, hola, mis amigos. Uh, soy Ben. I am. I have not spoken Spanish in a long time. Uh, I'll try here and there. So, if anyone wants to leave comments, I'll try to that read them. Good. But yeah. okay, yeah. I. I mean, those are just the basics. Uh, but yeah, I uh, am a full stack. Uh, don't know what to call my role anymore. But I'm a software engineer at Astro. Right. I work on the open source framework. And also do uh, whiteboard explainers on web dev concepts. Some of it Astro specific, specific, some of it about React and Tailwind and other fun libraries. So you might have seen me around the internet doing that. Uh, mm -hmm. But you said that you were trying out Astro and I decided to take the bat signal and see what y'all are up to. Yeah, there, there's a fun part. I usually do a lot of coding in streams, but I have never used Astro, I think that twice. But one was okay. like three years ago, almost when Astro um, got released. And the other one was like a few weeks ago. But we don't use it a lot. I mostly use Next.js, but I really like some of the decisions the Astro team has made on mainly developer experience. And I tried the Astro DB the other day and it was awesome. But I still don't quite understand why I will use it or. Um, how can I use it? Well, how can I use it? I think I kind of understand, but what's the use cases for them? And who is better than the whiteboard guy to tell us why? Uh, but first I have a question. I see the the whiteboard videos usually, and the sounds, the transition sounds. Is oh, something yeah. you do like, you, how do you do the the transition sound? It's like on microphone. Uh... Oh yeah, it. Some of it's just during the edit. I'm like, this needs a uh, explosion sound effect. And at the when I started doing whiteboard videos, I just had iMovie and a USB microphone that was to the original Rock Band game for the Wii. Hmm. I just figured out that you can also use the microphone to record stuff. It was very just like cobbled together. But of course, don't really have a sound effects library either. So I was like, eh. I think it would be kind of funny to do like a pop sound effect. And at this point, I have a little open source repo with the sounds. If people want to go awesome. use them to do things. I don't think anyone has, but if you go to the Astro Discord, our soundboard in all of the voice rooms do have some of those sounds. And also uh, you, you, you add board. like four or five frames with the transition and like drawings in the whiteboard. It's not just the sound, but if something, if something explodes, it has four or five frames of an explosion in the whiteboard. And I imagine that you have to like draw the initial, like the first frame and then say, yeah, it's a little yeah, it's stop motion. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's funny because I've never actually written on the whiteboard in a video. It's always been drawing stills and almost treating it like either a PowerPoint or a stop motion presentation. Nice. So it really it stretches the whiteboard to be like a web browser, I guess, it's because awesome. there's only so much you can do with it. Yeah, and uh, just for the people to know, um, I'm really bad drawing at whiteboards. I'm I'm really bad drawing at all. 
Uh, and I I don't remember what was the last time I had to like take a pen and do something on paper or on a whiteboard or whatever. Um, you draw the Astro logo before joining the meeting with me, and he said, uh, "Okay, I missed the like the, the Astro logo got like really on top of the camera, so I will draw it again." And it took you like four seconds. It will take me like a minute to draw something. So you are really skilled drawing on whiteboards. Thank you. Yeah, I'll I'll say I was really, really bad at it too. And this was back in the COVID times where I knew I wanted to do some like video format with the whiteboard, but I did like interviewing in college where you're forced to draw programs on a whiteboard. And I just mm. had the worst handwriting. And I did the thing everyone does where you just like draw like at an angle and you just start writing more and more at an angle as you draw around yourself. I was like, I need to get better at all of this. So yeah. I went on YouTube and found someone who just had like a stencil, draw the letter A 20 times. Now draw mm. the letter B 20 times. I went back to grade school just to figure out how do you write on a whiteboard? Because <laughs> well, I don't know. They are doing <laughs> a, a long a heart. Time. Like I always do mm. one part of the heart that is kind of okay, but the other one it's bad. I know that yes. this is something that happens Me to too. everyone, but not right? sure why. Can can you write? Uh, can you draw a heart in in your whiteboard? We will give you full screen for that. Because I practice too. Yeah, hang on. Because you need to you need to not do the do the teardrop. Let's see. Oh, you see? Because yeah. I did I did this part not long enough. <laughs> I almost screwed it up. Okay, well, but so that's if, that's quite good. I mean, it's way better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that it was really good. Yeah. Yeah, but I was about I, to draw it at an angle. It's so natural. Yeah, yeah, and also adding faces to thing it always helps. Uh, yes, the, the injury. Cartoonier uh, the better. Like the the derpy smile where the smile is at the same place the eyes are. Yeah, it's just it's just funny. Yeah, it, our mascot for Astro does the same kind of thing. His name's Houston. Well, wait. I don't know if you've seen him, but he's around no. the the docks. Let me just put Astro mascot. Ah uh, well, there it looks like there is a baseball team that it's called Astro, so uh, and the mascot True. is called Orbit. <laughs> uh, let's put Astro KS. I think I we're, saw. We're it. always fighting for SEO. Yep. Uh, let's see the screen. Oh wait, we are not in the screen. Where are He's... these guys? Perfect. Yes. Um, well, yeah, there he. Okay. Ah, this one. Yeah, I remember that this for right. the blog starter kit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. he's in the blog starter. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. also on the documentation starter, uh, there's one where he's a chef down there because we have recipes, which are just step-by-step -step explainers. Oh, look. We are together yeah. here. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, where's... Ah, here. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. There's little touches with with Houston everywhere. Houston, NASA. That's that's the loose connection. Yeah, I think it was a, Astro has a really good logo. Before um, jumping into actual doing things, I want to tell people in in chat that if you have like your Astro questions, it's like probably the best time you have to get them answers. Um, so if you have any questions. I didn't check if people did questions already, but I will assume they don't. Ah, uh, okay. well, someone had the same question. I did he actually record the explosion sounds? So yeah, I'm not I'm not alone in this sentiment. Yeah. Um, oh, let me just put a link to the sounds if anyone wants. Wait, oh <laughs> man, I just forgot. I have on our last stream. It's the first time ever we configured. Um, this application that has the questions in it to share with someone else. And I forgot to configure it for today, but we were able to like share a link with you so you can see all the questions and you just click it and it appears on screen. Um, That's cool. Nothing. Well, we have a question from Mati that says, question for Ben. I love the Astro look and narrow, uh, narrower use case and run with it. With recent developments at AstroDB, do you see Astro being advertised more for more for general purpose applications like Next.js and Remix? That's a really good question because you know when you build a framework, you want it to be the tool for everything. 
And, you know, Next.js definitely does that. They call it the SDK for the web, which sounds like, yeah, you're supposed to build everything with it, which is kind of true. You can do anything you want. But Astro, we, even though everything is possible, we chose certain use cases that are like, okay, the community really, really cares about content sites and managing their uh, markdown files, MDX files, building blogs, documentation, marketing. Like those were super natural fits for Astro. So we just went deeper and deeper and deeper, even though other things technically do work. So I guess to answer like, can you build general purpose stuff more and more every day? Now that there's Astro DB to build databases, way easier to talk about that. Uh, I'm actually working on a proposal right now for form actions because Next.js, they got server actions. They got cool stuff. And Astro is just go make a JSON endpoint, I guess. And that doesn't feel very modern. So we're thinking about those challenges because people are going to want to write stuff from an Astro app more often. Mm -hmm. But yeah, for general purpose apps, some people use HTMX to build things in a very different way. So if you're a kind of person that vibes with that, Astro is actually a really great home, more so than other JavaScript frameworks. But if you more care about like the JavaScript rendering patterns and server components, Next.js might be a better place for like apps because they also have the layout router, which is really cool for nested routing. That's not something that Astro has either. So Astro is really focused on like the blogs, docs, um, e-commerce sites, anything that is content first or content focused. Yeah. Uh, also, to be honest, the, the server actions in Next.js uh, was a really good um, addition. I think that's yeah. something that people doesn't really know yet is that they can use server actions without forms and it's really yes. useful i mean doing a in a normal function let's call a on submit uh they can or on click they can do something then await form action and then do something else it's like having uh, functions that run on the server but that you don't have to follow their request response structure it's quite good but also, to be honest, it's something new. And before that, people had to create your shades on endpoints, as you call it. So it's not something that people is not used to. So I don't think it's crucial. I think it's awesome to have it, but not crucial for most applications. Something I really had a hard time with in Astro was with the documentation. I was so used mm. to like next year's like my next year's mindset on how to do things and i said okay i want to do a really easy blog because astro has uh, view transitions and next year's doesn't and i really like <laughs> view transitions um and i said okay i want to have really really simple shyes stuff in here and i don't want to create uh, react components for it and I couldn't find easily something I found later that is you can just add a script tag and do JavaScript in there. And I, I, it was really hard for me to find this kind of information. And every time I try to find something like uh, the directives that you put to um, uh, a component to be client and that kind of things, wasn't also quite organical on how I got to that information. I had to find it really hard, let's say, to to find it. Uh, probably changed it in the last few months. Um, but well, I think Astro is awesome. And once I found this, I can create a script, I can do this uh, yeah. directive. It got really, really easier. Now I have, well, my girlfriend portfolio uh, is made in Astro and it's okay, in production. Yeah. Um, so nice. I'm really happy with it. But there's something else. I will check the, the questions later. Uh, AstroConf when and other questions related to it. Um, yeah. But there's something that you want people to know about Astro. It's people want to make their first application in Astro. They will go to the um, page. They will do the, the starter kit. What do you have to know before or while doing your first application in Astro? Yeah. Yeah. And also shout out to Kevin who left that comment. He's the uh, person who owns the Spanish translations on the Astro Docs. So <laughs> thanks for showing up. And yes, we should have an AstroConf. Um, 
But yeah. Dang it. I reply to him and now I'm forgetting the question. Can you kind of yeah. rephrase part of it? What what um what do you what do you have to know for doing your first after application? Yeah. Right, yeah. And you got some good comments there about discovering how to do client scripting because it's uh, we we don't talk about it first. We almost pretend that you don't reach for it often, or of course you're going to use React when that's not really true. Like just using script tags is something I do all the time. It's yeah, nice so, to just kind of reach just for as it. an extra comment. I in one of the templates I cloned, it used Alpine, and I thought for yeah. like two hours that if you want to do if you want to do basic shout script stuff, you have to go for a framework or library to do this stuff. So I ended up using Alpine for two hours because I thought you couldn't do like plain shop script. Oh, funny. Okay, that's good to know. I mean, people do like blending in Alpine. I'm still, I'm a little weirded out by it. Just writing JavaScript in a string and like there's no completion, yeah. there's no types. I don't know about this, I but like also it. yeah. it's kind of freeing. Like Tailwind, I, I get it. So yeah, there is an integration, but just slinging script tags with query selectors is totally fine. But yeah, I guess the answer, uh, in order to start building stuff, what do you want to know? I mean, first off, I think, you know, again, Astro is very content focused. So if you're trying to do stuff with Markdown or MDX, go look at like the blog tutorial, which is something we have on the Astro docs that just walks you through building the blog. Yeah, I and then it. it glows. Okay, cool. Yeah, and it goes. I actually don't know if it does, but uh, does it talk about content collections? Did that word come up at any point? Yeah, I think that it has a post collection. I don't remember because it was some months ago. But every time I had to start up an Astro application, I used the blog starter, um, and then modified or, or removed the collection. I think it has a configuration, and then you have to go to the docs to learn more about it. If you want to create another one, you have to like clone the entities. It was like a file that defines how what a collection looks like, and then it takes the information yeah. from a specific folder, right? Yes, yes. And content collections, I'm jumping straight to features I helped work on. They're not something you need to know day one, but mm -hmm. they are kind of nice if you're you know you know you're gonna build a bunch of content stuff, uh, blogs and docs specifically. And you know it's going to have front matter that has like the title of the post and the published date and all yeah. of that. So seeing it early on is like, oh, this solution exists and I can reach for it to say every post must have a title. And then when I import it, it will have the title. Like that mm. is a nice thing to know about early on if that's the kind of site that you're building. But just fundamentals, like I like to say, you just need to know HTML and file-based routing. If you knew the Next.js pages router, just take that knowledge and put it in Astro directly because we're still just the pages router. Mm -hmm. I guess we didn't get the memo that everyone's using layouts now, but like for content stuff, pages router is still kind of better. That's, I don't know. That's been our opinion or at least our feeling that the community has really warmed up to it. So yeah. we're just leaning in and saying, yeah, pages router, this is sick. Yeah, well, when I, I started doing applications in app router, uh, let's say six months before it goes to production. And when I started, I said, I, I really prefer Pages Router. I mean, sure. Pages Router is way better. But once it clicked, let's say four months after doing applications every day, I started seeing the benefits of it. Yes. And I will never go back to it because there's some, like, there's things you can't do in, in Pages Router that you can't in a router but the um, page router is way more simple on how to do things uh, you want to fetch data in your page okay you have methods you have get static prop with you have get source R props you have to fetch data in react server component well you can use an sdk you can do it in your page you can do it in a component you can use fetch you can modify cache i mean you have i think it's something that uh, react has in contrast to other frameworks you have way more ways of doing things than, I don't know, Angular, where you have your uh, structure more defined on how do you fetch data, you show components. Yes. So 
it's it's hard to like do up um how to say it it's hard to structure your team or to teach the people that will work on how you will do things because everyone can do it differently and it works but it won't scale if you don't have a structure defined um so yeah i think that pages makes more sense with things are simple if you let people do a blog with app router they will do weird things yeah yeah and i totally get what you're saying about apps like it's definitely next saying yeah this is well it's called the app router but if you're building things that tend to have shared layouts that tend to have more dynamic parameters than static ones where you're not putting a bunch of one-off routes for a page. You actually have like the authentication gateway that is a layout that does a fetch for a user and then renders all the sub routes. At that point, a nested layout makes a ton of sense. Hmm. And Astro is kind of a blend of both because Astro components work exactly like server components. You can fetch data at the top and then render it at the bottom. The only difference is in Astro, it is just a string of HTML that goes to the browser. And Next.js is more opinionated. It's all React. It's a special like JSX format that mm -hmm. gets sent to the browser. Pros and cons to both. I could write like research papers on it, but I won't. <laughs> I won't go into that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Astro is like a really simplified server component. That's just you fetch some data, you return HTML, and you can fetch data in any component you want. There's no server side props. It's just like yeah, I can fetch the comments from this comments component and just embed it on the blog. And if I need to re-render it, just do a form post that re-renders the page, view transitions, yep. make it do a crossfade, and that's kind of it. Yeah, perfect. I think I have an exercise for you that includes a whiteboard. Okay. Um, oh. And it might be fun because it's more like thinking than, uh, than doing things. Let me just put you in full screen. Um, I was thinking, it, it, it's easy. I, just for context, I didn't tell Ben that we were doing this. I, it's just something I just uh, thought about. Um, imagine that you have, um, let's say, crypto application, like a token listing application that has uh, some tokens, right? And once you click a token, you just show below that list a graph um, with the historical values of that um of that specific token but the url changes so you are in home okay. and the home shows the token listing and when you click one you go to slash btc and you still see the 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 list and below you see the graph so imagine that you are in pages router and you don't want to refetch information you how you do it and how you do it in Astro to make it work. Yeah. So, okay. So let me, let me see here. Uh, <laughs> I'm in a very cramped area, but let me try this. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Astro guy. I'm going to need some room. So we've got, we've got like a layout, right? Yeah. And you're saying that we have these different uh, crypto things that we want to know about, right? Yeah, if like, like tokens. Yeah, let, let's say BTC, Ethereum, and it casts its prices and everything, right? And you click one and below you see a graph. Yeah, totally. So yeah, I, I like click on this one and it shows me, I don't know anything about crypto. So no. Well, imagine that it's... <laughs> Imagine that there's um, like um, currencies for for different countries. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I understand that that bit. But like by graph, do you mean like kind of a stock graph? Like yeah, the, like the a line graph. See over time. Line yeah, graph. Yeah. yeah. Totally. yeah. Twenty twenty one. Okay. It was like two dollars. And... Yeah. I shouldn't say I know nothing. I know something a little bit. But yes, this would be the value of that currency. Yeah. And then. But you still have to like, see the the list with the list of tokens when you click one imagine like a layout and you see the list persistent yeah exactly totally so and when you click on this you're on slash btc or it's a query param or something we'll say it's a route and hmm. then if i click on eth 
that's gonna like you know update the ui we have a new graph that looks a little different and then this is on splash huge yeah and the the hard part of this one is imagine that this list includes like the token uh names and everything and it it includes the current price you know that the price changes every second so if you cache the if you get the information for every route you might see different values every time you change routes and you should persist the same table every time you change routes mm -hmm. yes so which is this the table view i do have an answer in astro by the way i'm not stalling oh uh, awesome show. yeah uh well let me open x x kali just to like show what i think oh worse whiteboard okay yeah and it's <laughs> it's not whiteboard i it's it doesn't have like light mode or yes okay i'm not so good with um Excalibur. i was totally fine. oh man why um like this okay i imagine something like this with let's say The, the the space between the lines. Let's say that you have this like this, and we will have five different ethers, right? Um, yep. and everyone has its price, like so. Every time you click one of them, like you click in here, it will show below a graph with the thing yes yeah but when you click another it it has to show the graph for that specific one but this one should remain the same um yep and it it should have the same prices so you don't have to refetch all the values for all tokens every time you change the route it has to have the same values as before totally yeah. Back to okay, you. so the only the only difference is instead of a tab view, it's a table view, and that table view has some more info on it. Exactly. So, yeah, I can do that. You so, can go for the Astro one first if if you have the idea. I mean, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I've got a rough idea because I've definitely been thinking about um, the way Astro thinks about persistence and the way. Uh, nested layouts do. Yeah, uh, give me not, one that's... second. I uh, I will um put your like microphone louder, but I have to go to another. Um, well, be right back in a minute. I guess yes, like uh, a Yeah, you're still on on camera, so you can do things. So if we're talking about a route param in between pages, we're going to check out slash pages slash uh, currency or coin or ticker. Okay, something like that. So dynamic param, currency is the thing that comes down the server pipe. And in your Astro component, which I'll just say are triple backticks, we would take the currency off of Astro params. So I'm going to pseudocode this because hmm. I don't want to write full code here. But you are, currency you are will come out of params. with the correct oh, uh, audio right now. So OK, cool. So params, uh, the currency gets plucked off. We put that in a DB query or something like that um, for all of the currencies to render to table initially. And then we uh, take the result of that and we put it into a table component of some kind. Okay, so you are using the, the Astro DB right now. 
So you fetch the information, you store it on the DVE? Yes. Okay. Uh, and there are a lot of different options. Like if you need this thing to invalidate over time, maybe you want a client component with React query. Hmm. That actually might be necessary with that. Um, I'll explain the trade-offs. So right now I'm doing this all server side. Like everything is server side. And I'm noticing hmm. I'm a little off cam. So let me, let me pull this closer. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So we've got our table. And this is just another server component, another Astro component. And a nice thing that you can do is this little directive called transition colon persist. So transition. Is that something like a prop that you add to the um, component itself? Yeah, and you can add this. I need to make sure it works on an Astro component, but you can add this to any client-side component or element. And this is saying if you go to from this route to another route, and that component is shared between the two of them, just take the HTML that's in the browser and leave it there. So awesome. instead of re-rendering this table, just, just leave it. Oh, and that's view transitions awesome. will transition everything around it. And what what will be used to understand that the component is the same, but that it's not a, an instance of the same component? Yeah, so you can add a name to it. Ah, okay, perfect. Uh, so you could In say, case that yeah, you have you two tables. Say, like, okay. Yeah, and you do need to make sure like you don't have two things named table, but it does perfect. lead to all sorts of cool things with transitions. Like maybe on one page, table is an actual HTML table. Uh, another one, it's a different view, and it mm -hmm. would like trend morph between the views. The browser is very smart about those sorts of things. Perfect. But here we want it to be the exact same element, and we don't want to uh, re-render it. So the one con of this approach is even though the table remains the same, we will still wastefully do a database query yeah. when we go to the next route, even though it's dumped. And that's something I'm actually kind of fighting for in Astro is what if transition persist could be used to persist server components as well. So you could move the query inside of table and then it wouldn't rerun table. Perfect. That would be like the ideal API. That but was right my now question. it will rerun yeah. the query unless you put like a cache header or something like that, which, you know, maybe that's what you want to do. Yeah. I mean, in this case, it's more something visual. Because imagine that uh, I see a price and then I go to the other route and now I see a different price and I go back to the other one and it's the old price. So I want to keep it consistent. So I think it makes sense. The only problem I see with this is that probably the value in the database uh, got stale really fast. So mm. when do you update it? When the user leaves the session? But I think it's not something I, I really care. Um, so that's how you do it in Astro. And I think it's pretty the same thing you will do in Pages Router because you have the same problem. You can't like have a layout and fetch the information in the layout and then the developer, the table part, it's a route, right? Yeah, so I was gonna ask about this. I know in the app router, like if I was thinking of this the app router way, my brain would naturally think, oh, this goes in the layout, yeah. and then this goes in the route, so then this stays persisted. Yep. But my one question would be, can a layout pass props to a route? In this a case, I don't think you need it, but well, can it? Well, you have the, the token in the URL param, so yes. the page just get that information, fetch the information, and show it. And you have a button of like go back, close, whatever, and it will just redirect you to, um, to the index that just has the layout. And yeah, totally. the component it's never removed, and uh, um, also it's pretty fast because it has the router has the client side cache, so the transition will be immediate. So yeah, it's way easier to do it in a router than in Pages router where you have to store the information from the table anywhere else because well you have you don't have a way to pass that state. That's why I think there's some things on a router that you can't do in Pages Router, but still think that Pages Router is the most common sense for most applications. Yeah, totally. And like, if we were in Next.js Pages Router, like this wouldn't exist and we'd be screwed. Like no, that would yeah. just be 
you have to go to an external, let's say, app stash or, or any database that you want to just persist for the session, let's say. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it, like, it's a really simple application, but, and also a really common use case, uh, but it's still a really hard problem. Yeah. Yeah. It's a silly hard problem if you're dealing with a, cause I remember we had this working on a content site in college where we were using a CMS and we had a footer of course. And the footer is fetching info from a CMS. Hmm. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to do get static props from underscore app. It's like, hmm. no, you, you can't, you can't do that. It's like, so I literally can't render my footer. Yes, sir. You cannot render your footer unless you want to put the footer component on every page, which is what we did. But like, uh, really? Yeah, I don't know. Have... I felt so crazy how big of a leap Next.js yeah. did you from where it was the, and where it is. The get layout uh, abstraction that you can call from your... I think I saw that. Yeah, no, it's not the best thing. Uh, also, there's um, something that, let's say you can't do in pages, but you can in app, and it's ITN. Um, imagine that you want yeah. to do ITN, right? ITN is usually managed by dictionaries that are based on namespaces. And imagine that you have a page that has, that it's using the common namespace. That is where everything is stored when you don't know uh, where to put it. So the your page will only use two tokens from the common namespace, the hello and the cancel one. But you still have to ship the entire namespace in page in, in get static props or get source side props because everything you pass from on props on get source side props or get static props gets baked in in next data. But in server components, only the tokens that you use in your server components will be shipped baked in the HTML. So yeah. you you save a lot of bytes of unused things. And there's yes. some like really big applications that shipping a, an unused namespace, we are talking about 400 kilobytes of unused things. So it might be a really, really big thing. Um, I think that having the ability of every component can contact with the server, like has access to the server, it's a really powerful thing, but it's also a really high responsibility. Um, so, yeah. Yes, it is. Um, and I totally get you on that, that dictionary problem. Uh, we have IT, IT NAN as well. And it's been pretty baked in because Pages Router makes it pretty nice to organize all the thing. I didn't totally understand why App Router didn't have it. I assumed it was just on the cutting room floor, couldn't find a solution. So don't block App Router on that. Maybe they'll revisit I18N. I don't know Next.js's plans. Yeah, but it doesn't feel like it's impossible. It just feels like it didn't work with how their package was designed. So it needs to be rethought. Yeah, I think that the problem with, with that uh, I it was one of the biggest boomers I had when started with app router, and it's totally. that in in pages router you have your methods you have get static props and get server side props, so you have a way to say hey here you have the locale do whatever you want with it, but in um, in app router you don't quite have it. I mean you can do something that it's use the header function get the assembly language header, and get the locale from it, and it's basically what we tell people to do. But I think it's better what we recommend that it's, if you want to do ITNN correctly, check on middleware, the sub language header, and then rewrite the user to previously generated pages. So that's cheaper and faster to do. It doesn't um, apply for all cases, but yes, for most of them. But yeah, I still miss you have the locale every time uh, in a really easy function to get it. Yeah, yeah. And I think I'm I think I'm seeing what you mean there. I know that edge middleware, like one of the hallmark use cases was redirects by locale, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, I know like just redirects and gateways, that's what it was for and still yeah. is. Uh we usually recommend well for ITN, I think it depends a lot on the case, but you we usually recommend rewrite so the URL still stays the same. But you can also do re redirects. 
So if I use that gives the user the ability of changing locales in we detect that you are in France, but you don't want to see the page in French, so you can change to whatever you want. It also allows or makes easier to um, do um, localization to say, hey, you are in France. You pro Well, it, it, it doesn't depend on geolocation, but on the sub-language that it's based, it's set by the browser. So it's what mm -hmm. the user has configured. Uh, but yeah, it's different. I think that PageSource Router got it better than the App Router, but it's more flexible on, on App Router. The thing is that PageSource Router also has a really good ecosystem on IT9 libraries. And oh, yeah. uh, when it moved to App Router, you are now, well, there's no IT9 library to handle an App Router. Now you have, but at the beginning was really hard to, to make it. Um, well, pe uh, question from people. Sorry, people, this question is for 30 minutes ago, but when should I use Astro compared to other frameworks? Yeah, so again, like depending on your use case, if you're doing marketing, blogs, documentation, e-commerce, that sort of stuff, that's Astro's bag. And the big benefits are, first off, you can bring whatever component thing you want. I'm sure a lot of you here love React, and yes, of course, you can use React. But if you want to use a plain script tag or SolidJS or Svelte or Vue or any of those other solutions, first off, you can reach for any library written in those other frameworks and they'll work, which is nice. Sometimes mm. you feel restricted, like, oh, I love this library, but I can't use it because it's in the wrong framework. Like, no, you can totally just design around that and it will not hurt anything. So it's really accessible in that way if you know what you want to use. Astro is just kind of this blank canvas to inject whatever components you want. So I think that's really when you want it, is you're building stuff that is static content. Uh, you do care about that time to first paint and all the web vitals. We really care about those. Mm -hmm. And uh, you want to use any component framework. You don't want to feel locked down. Yeah. It, that doesn't mean you have to do five frameworks in your same application, but the thing yes. is that you could. Y uh, you could. That's yeah. always what people say. It's like, why would I ever want five frameworks? It's like... We didn't say that. We said any framework, not all at once. Yeah. I hope. I mean, yeah. you can. You totally can. I yeah. think micro front ends is what you call that. Kakase has the same question as I I did. Can you mix us from vanilla yeah? Ah, vanilla yeah. Sorry, man. It's like eight PM. Vanilla she <laughs> yes. Yes, you can. And it's awesome. It's uh it, it's not something you see often in Astro applications. Yeah, I. it's definitely common in the stuff that we build and we see showcased in our showcase channel. I've personally just been using script tags for some new sites that I've been building. Also, web components to scope them. I'm not going to try to sell you on web components. They're a little nasty, but they do get the job done and you don't have to reach for any libraries to do it. So yeah. yeah, if you need to do, like I'm doing a lot of animation work with GreenSock, which lets you like animate drawings. Love because. GreenSock. I That's use what it I, yeah. in action script. Yeah. And with React, it feels like, oh, React is just this shell, and I have to figure out how to green sock in with use effect or whatever. But with Astro, it's like, just put a script tag, import hmm. green sock, put it on the element. Like, there we go. That's what I wanted. So it feels really good for that stuff, where you know you're reaching for a library that is vanilla JS. You just put the script tag. Yeah. No, I think it, it's awesome. Um. Charles says, uh, well, congratulations for bringing Benny here. Uh, the content is always top, so people love you. I don't know. Say hello. Who is Ben? Sorry, but I don't know. Who. <laughs> I don't know if it's someone that knows you uh, or it's uh, just someone that really doesn't know you. This is something I will say if I come to a stream of someone I know. Um, so probably. Ah, there's also... um a content creator from Spain that it's called Mansdev that always, always uses um, web components. So yeah. probably he has some content on, on Astro. I will ask him because if it pairs well, it's a good opportunity to do something. Um, Seba says, I rephrased the question. If you had to start over in the world of programming, what would you choose, front-end or back-end? Oh, like choosing a focus. Yeah. Oh, that's... I don't know. Porcano was those. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
So, now you're full I stack. mean, for me, yeah, I started front end and I would do it again. Uh, CSS is still my favorite programming language. Unironically, I like styling things and working with that. Did you get the fly? No. I don't know if that's what you're going for. I tried. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, I, I just like the, the front end side of things. I started with like video game development in Java just oh, to man. move things around. But that's for, and that was the most rewarding, yeah. That's for smart people. Uh, it has a lot of calculations and I can't with it. But yeah, I I second you on. I prefer. I choose front end, and I will choose it again. Yeah. Uh, Matty says, not to be rough point, but the pips from Redwood JS just showcased their own RSC implementation. I guess RSC is the way forward. I haven't seen it. Yeah, I just read the post, so I got a little context. Uh, oh. Yeah, it's it's really cool what they're doing. I have never uh, used is... Redwood. Yeah, uh, it's been around for a little while. They're, they pivoted a little bit. Now they're the framework focused on startups. So yeah, the framework for startups. And I guess now they're showcasing Bighorn, with this, which is their RSC uh, development branch. They have a Canary release out, but apparently that it doesn't have a dev server. <laughs> you have to what? build and serve everything. So very early, very early. So maybe not ready to build, but what they're doing with it, they're trying to take React server components and they're just putting it onto their model and they're okay. kind of tearing down everything. They used to be a full stack solution that marries GraphQL endpoints with React. And now they're just mm. throwing away GraphQL, at least from the, the default. And it's just a server component framework. And in the end, it's Next.js with more opinions. Like they have a slightly more opinionated router with okay. services alongside your pages. I don't totally understand that part, but they have that. Oh, they also have really Prisma out of the post. box. It's very thorough. Like they actually explain how RSCs work. They accidentally wrote a really good learning tutorial on what RSCs do, even though it's not Redbook specific. So it's worth a read for that. Nice. But yeah, some of it is like, it only makes sense if you were using Redwood before, I assume. But it is cool to see. Like before, there were these other tools like Blitz.js, which was Next.js with more opinions. But over time, they had to fork Next.js and monkey patch it to do what they wanted. But now that RSCs exist, you don't have to do that. You can just take RSCs and mold them into what you want. And it will be similar to what Next.js is doing, but in your own way. So yep. that's what I'm interested to see. Like, what does it look like to have another RSC framework? How different will it be? Because yeah. there are different choices you can make. And I just want to see them carry out. Yeah, I have to try to try this one, Waku, uh, the one that Daishi is doing, the RSC oh, yeah. framework. Uh, uh -huh. But I haven't tried it yet. I really want to try it. Um, and I'm really glad that PMPM got this patch thing, this patch yes. package thing, because before you ha you needed this like patch package package from NPM. Yep. And, yep. <laughs> and now you can do it directly with NPM and it works awesome. Uh, the amount of people I saw that was using patch package to patch Next.js to make it, I don't know, not streaming on Pages Router, for example. Um, or I yeah. think the one of the funniest thing I saw that was really awesome, Pages Router in some specific version, you said streaming for Pages, but wasn't mm -hmm. using a streaming in Pages when the user is a bot, like a crawler. And the thing with the streaming, if, if you have your own infra, is that streaming doesn't uh, compress because you can't compress a stream. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so yeah, people you was, need to buffer it. Yeah. Yeah. So people was losing compression and the patients started like uh, having more weight than, than before. So they patched next year, so every request was treated as a bot request. So they decided with streaming on, on patients router. So it's awesome to have the ability of doing like patch internal libraries, uh, way way. Yes, do it with caution. Don't just say, "Oh, I'm <laughs> gonna patch everything." Because yeah. and it's also funny you mentioned streaming because Astro has streaming just silently turned on, and people have definitely 
you know, depending on what they're doing, they might want to stream in a different way. We have like in order streaming, which I didn't realize this was possible, but it's zero JavaScript to just stream HTML into a browser. Mm. It totally works. I thought you needed like a JavaScript listener, but you totally don't. No. So we just have that for free, but sometimes you need that compression and you need other things. So we ended up with like a compromise. SSG people get compression if you don't want to have a server and then you get streaming if you do want a server. And if you want something else, PNPM patch, I don't know. <laughs> we don't yeah. do anything else. Matt says, when there's Astro merge, the people need a plushie of Astro pets. We need a plushie. That's the important part. There is... Uh... You don't have a plushie of... Uh... Yes, I don't have a pl maybe we had like a we had a 3d pl printed one but that was just that was just a hobby you, you, you can't uh you can't uh, squish it yeah you can't squish it right like that's that's what we need it's not plush that's what we need for pets um kakasa says what do you expect from react 19 and telling for when they came out oh yeah i'm i've been trying out both I'm actually trying out React 19 in Astro to see like how does the new use form status work and how can it work with how Astro does endpoints. And I'm like, wow, it just works. It takes any function and it gives you the status and you can use it to like have disabled stuff in other states. It's a really cool little primitive. Yep. So yeah, React 19 in forms is so smart how they designed it. I really like it. Yeah, and if you haven't seen uh, Ben's video on Tailwind, uh, it's awesome. It's pinned on your Twitter, right? Yeah, Twitter and YouTube. Uh, it was my most recent video, but yeah, yeah I did a little deep dive. It's and B it's Holmes, early. both, right? B Holmes. B Holmes there? Yeah. Yeah, I'll share a, a link down yep. here. Perfect. Dev. Uh, there was another um yeah the template collection in astrodoc is pretty awesome yeah i have always used the templates um they are awesome um you should get a whiteboard next time once we'll yeah i should but i'm really bad with it so sorry those neon signs are cool though like the the react yeah. and the twitch together they it's they nice are not fun. neon they are lead but they behave oh, like neon okay. so yeah. they don't yeah. have like heat um, and nice. fun fun thing. Uh, uh, how do I do this? Um, well, I think that you will be removed from the screen for a second. Yes, but um, just to see, like the size of the React one, it it's bigger than what it looks like. Yeah, it looks. It's really big. I think it's like 70 centimeters. Um, I didn't bring up banana for scale, but it's really big. Yep. Oh, I forgot metric system. Damn yeah. It. Awesome. I'll convert. Awesome internet <laughs> being awesome. Um, I kind of messed it up <laughs> because when your microphone was low, I just started doing things and people forgot that you were explaining something but you then wrap it wrap it up so oh, um, oh okay I, a little bit ago yeah i remember seeing him making an animation for his website and it was a whiteboard that auto erased itself i think it's the most iconic thing from your content the the thing about the whiteboard being remote like these frames in the middle of the transitions i think it's awesome um ah here um do you know why Midu loves Astro too, uh, so much? Because that's one of the things I was talking with uh, with Ben before showing the stream. Uh, there's a lot of people here that really loves Astro, and I really think it's because Midu uses it a lot. Um, I don't know if you know Ibai Shanos, the streamer from uh, Spain. Ibai? I don't. Well, it's, I think, one of the largest streamer in the world and he does like okay. an event called La Velada that ha okay, yeah. has the record of the most most people live in stream like viewers in a stream in Twitch it was yeah. one one million I think it was 
or something like that, or two million. Like I can't total remember. viewers, that's crazy. Um, now they rented the Santiago Bernabeu, I think it is. It's the Real Madrid Stadium for the next event. Yeah. And he's doing the um, the web page for La Velada. Middle is doing the web page for La Velada uh, for Ibai, and it's using Astro, and it's doing the entire thing in stream. So pretty, pretty nice. Um, uh, did he already show Astro TV? Sorry, I got um, I got him entertained with uh, the whiteboard and everything. Do you want to tell tell us what is Astro TV and why it's so awesome and why you could use it and everything? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Astro TV is awesome. So it's a batteries included database that helps you set up your data and configuration in seed files and dev environment production, all of it handled for you. So you don't need to know anything about Docker or MySQL instances or even API keys when you're in development. You just kind of install AstroDB with AstroDB, you start your dev server, and you have a database. That's because we use uh, SQLite, which means it's a SQLite file in development. And then when you go to deploy, it's a distributed SQLite file. So like on the edge in regions that you choose. And mm. it has like distributed writing and other features that we are adding to it. But yeah, whole host of things. We're mostly launching it because Astro is growing into those more dynamic cases. Like you have a blog, but blogs have comments. Blogs mm. have likes. Blogs have, you know, calls to the YouTube API. At least mine does. So you need somewhere for data to go and somewhere for data to persist if the user does something. So all of that is being considered with this solution. Also auth gateways. We have a community library already that just takes AstroDB and turns it into an auth service. So you can just own it. It gives you like a Google login button if you need that. So it is OAuth compatible. Um, a lot of batteries included stuff. And uh, by default, it's memory or... Um... It's, it really creates a, a file in the file system in development. Yeah, it creates a file. We did have memory at first, but then we realized, yeah, yeah you want your debugging tools, though. Yeah, like, I, the, I yeah. saw the, the blog post and it was in memory, and I said, but this is awesome to have like a file in it. So I think it's... What did we say in memory? Uh, oh, no, yeah, well, the, the post I saw, the original blog post, uh, it, yeah, I know it was one. using um, an in-memory one. Um, the good thing, uh, when I saw that, I said, I re really need this in Next.js. So I have like a tool for bootstrapping projects. And I created one using libsql that I think it's what Astro is using internally yes, for the Astro DB. And it kind of worked, but you had to do a, a lot of workarounds around it to make it really work. Like the types were, weren't working. You had to do a lot of things manually. The instrumentation for seeding the database, it's not included, so you had to do it. So all these things are already take, taken care of you uh, by Astro. So you don't have to do all the things manually. What are the, um, the features that it has? Like um, semi auto configured seeding and what else? Yeah. Uh... Feature set. Right now, it is, you know, SQLite database distributes in production. And we also do have a portal called Studio that lets you, like, go mm. in your web browser yeah. and look at all of your tables. And that is where we're really trying to build, like, a different story than a table viewer because you could use Supa based or something like that and you would get a database viewer, maybe with more buttons than ours. Mm. But we want to think of it more like WordPress's model where you can have a plugin that also creates like a blog editor. So instead of looking at your blog table as just like these rows, you can look at it as rich text editor and it writes to the table behind the scenes. But as a user, you just go in that portal and you get a really nice viewer for your data. And also so, for the local one. I mean, you can just run yes, Astro Studio and, and see your, I think that's something it, that it's really important for developer experience is you have your local database and you don't want to manually change the data in your database. Also, I think that the SQL, Live SQL one is SQL light ones are like kind of binary, so you can't open it in a text editor and change them, like the .db yeah, file. Yeah. 
Uh, so Might having, be able to. yeah, not but sure yeah. why. Um, but having the studio to change the database and then go to your application, refresh the page, and having things there without running queries or what, I think it's it's awesome. It's something that like Firebase is missing years after <laughs> releasing. If you want to have a table to modify things, you can't. You can just like go document by document and modifying just one thing at a time. Uh, mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know what you mean. Because I was uh, like, they have a viewer, but it is yeah. a lot different. Yeah. If I haven't you want worked to, with document reports in a while. You can't export data from Firebase without running yeah. a script. But... Yeah, that's that hurts. Like we just have an export DB button because we yeah. thought, you know what? We want to show there's zero lock-in and there's yeah, you can't get better than your database as a file <laughs> and you can download your file whenever you want. Yeah, no, you can like do um like backups but with uh, yeah. Google Cloud Platform, but it's like okay, this file is stored in our system and you can't like export it and get the contents also. Uh, so it's like horrible. Yeah, it's very proprietary what you get out of it, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, Sun says, is Astro suitable to do projects like an ERP with lots of graphs, airbag, and functions like that? Yeah, so when you're getting into those kinds of apps, it seems like HTMX is what people use to build it. Yeah. And Just again, I know that below. this is yeah, 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 right there. And I've played with this pattern, and boy, is it different. Like, it's got to be your cup of tea to build things with just HTML endpoints that re-render this part of the page and that part of the page. When you start getting the hang of it, it is really simple compared to something like RSCs, where you have to think about the layout conventions. With HTMX, you can just say, hey, I want to re-render this table. I'm going to go to this endpoint that sends me back the new table as HTML. And then I'll just hot swap that HTML on the page. It has a ton of control. So if you want to do things like a CRUD, where you have a table for all of your customers, I don't know, and you want to re-render one of the rows, you would like create an endpoint that returns the new row. And then you would place that new row surgically where it's supposed to go. And you can just keep doing that for everything. So if That's that nice. sounds interesting to you, it actually is a really nice way to build CRUD apps in Astro. But if you're doing anything else that's like server component patterns, that's where I'm really interested. And I feel like there's work to be done to make it cool. Form mm -hmm. actions is going to be the first one yeah. as like a server action sort of answer. I will totally recommend for people, if you have any questions like, does this work? Try to do an application with it. It will teach yeah. you a lot of things. So if you want to try this application with a lot of crudes and everything, try to do, as I said, HTMX and, and Astro and see what it it looks like. If you don't like it, now you'll at least know that you don't like it be because of X reason. Uh, it says that Ben sounds evil with Eco. I think it's probably when he was turned around to the whiteboard. Now it... Totally. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, we are like... 20 minutes. Yeah, okay. I will try to get the, the newest questions. Um shop astrobel. I didn't know that you have like a a swag one. Astro. Yeah, yeah. I, I go to speed up. It's something I totally think uh Bercel next year should have. Because I have a lot of swag from, from Bercel, but I really need a new cup. Uh, like a new hat and yeah. I can't get one because they are not doing them anymore and if it's available to buy I really could like just buy one but I can't so look this is the Astro oh I love this one this one looks nice this one is yeah. awesome uh, and this is Jack a comfy. I can Jack tell it's you. comfy I have one yeah. from from Bercel. It's also comfy, but um, I prefer like. Well, we have. I don't have them here. Um, ah, also, I have this one. Ooh. I have two cups from Bercel. One of them I use it. I use it every day, and the other one is this one. That I really like it. Yes. But my dog. Yeah. Bit yeah the 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 top part of it, 
I don't know if. Oh, okay, gotcha. Can... It's got the it's got the metal thing on it. Yeah, and it's chewed, so it's not sharp, <laughs> but it's missing. Hey, it's two tone. Yeah. That's that's new fashion. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So you are adding more things to to here. Eventually. Yeah, we've been chatting like we gotta add more swag items than we have right now, but the ones we have are pretty quality. What's... Of course, I. Yeah, I've seen all of these. I've tried all of. Them. Yeah, what's the best swag for you that you have from Astro? Uh, from Astro, hmm. huh? We, I don't know where I put it. It might even be in this drawer. No, I. We went on a trip to Copenhagen, in Denmark, if people are aware, and we had like special edition Copenhagen stickers. Where like Houston is in a boat in the harbor in Copenhagen. Like it's it's just cute. No, so, I. I got um, a sticker from POAP, a Proof of Attendance Protocol, that it's the Istanbul specific version. And did yeah. you know that in Istanbul, everything it's like, um, people have me tejido in English, <laughs> how it's called, um, like crochet. Uh, and I have a sticker. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's see this. Oh, yeah. Oh, are you talking about... Which sticker are you talking about? That one is really nice. Okay. Yeah. So, let's see... That yeah, knitting. I, I guess that's another word. I hear it's Power SpaceX Index Fund. Uh, <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> okay, so... All right. Fuzzy's part of the core team. He's He's Josh in the chat right now, but... Perfect. Well, I think he's the one that says, um, I don't know them. So probably it was. Okay. Oh, yeah, uh, the no. UI one was 3 million in Twitch. 3 million people at the same time. Wow. Thing. Yeah. And at now... the same time? Yeah, yeah. At the same time. What? Yeah. It was. That... That's the record for Twitch. And that sounds. Yeah. What? <laughs> that was I didn't think anyone had broken year. a break occur. Okay. Uh, it was needed. Yeah. Thanks, Luca. Uh, so that's last year, and now the page for the event uh, will be in Astro. Um, it's yes. La Velada, La Velada del Año dot com, I think it is. Love it. And it's yeah, it's in the works by me. Uh, perfect. So we have the Astro Astro dot build slash db right this is oh yeah that's the that's the db homepage. we need to link to this in more places because it's not easy enough to find but this is everything about astro db yeah every time i so, have to do something i went to the blog post and from the blog post i got to here i know and you shouldn't do that i mean the docs are thorough i hope but yeah this is like where we make it pretty and those tabs are view transitions yes yeah um, I will. I would really love to have also in this part, uh, like the name of the file, because you can. It's opinionated. Yeah. You can have whatever you it want, is. right? Um, but I think the schema it's being loaded from. This is the schema file or something like that, right? Yeah, config. Yeah, db slash config. Okay. I think we were trying to slam a bunch of things together. So like here we have the config and a query together, but of course, like the query would be in your pages and the configs over here. Perfect. Yeah, the yeah. good thing, something I, I like from, from AstroDB uh, against doing it on your own is that you every like variable that you export from here, it's an item from the schema, right? So you don't have to yes. manually create the schema for that. That's awesome. And this is the Astro... Um, Astro Studio, right? Yeah, there's there's a bunch of little buttons in here. Uh, yeah, most of that stuff, or at least the export is studio, schema management, partially. Um, things are very free tier, so if anyone's worried about free tiers, uh, my one argument for it is, if you're worried about Astro dropping the free tier, it's free to host a SQLite file that no one's reading. 
Hmm. So we can get like millions of users that try it once and then walk away. And we don't lose any money because of that. Hmm. It's not the same for like SQL servers that need to be spun up for every customer. Yeah. Like it's really easy to let anyone try it. So we're just going to keep letting you try it. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I think it's um, having like your local database and then click a button uh, or run a command and then have the same database deployed to an external service. I think it's yeah. awesome. I think that I really miss the era where we have a like control over the entire development um, environment. Like I have mm -hmm. my database running in my local instead of a service that run my my development database. Um, last time, like my last three or four shops had this this thing where the database is in other place and not in a Docker inside. So I miss it. Um, fuzzy, it's a fuzzy bear where I yep. really, it's really hard to <laughs> follow what's happening on the chat. Uh, yeah, there was a, a little Astro reunion in here. He goes by <laughs> fuzzy bear. Okay. Uh, in across the servers. Perfect. Adam's also an integration author. Aliens, one of our, uh, uh, what do we call you, Elian? He built the new theme portal that lets you upload Astro themes. So now he's kind of like a Astro app developer kicking the tires. He was also using AstroDB when it was like 0.0.1 and got to suffer through five different redesigns. I'm sorry, Elian, but he's a trooper <laughs> and he's good at testing things. Perfect. He's also at like every conference. So if you run into Elian, like say hi. And do you think that we can like do a hello world for Astro using ADB? I have never did the, the full flow. So what do you want us to do? Yeah. So do you have something in mind that you want to build? No. Because my go-to would be like, make a blog with a like button. Perfect. And that will work you through a bunch of different things. Awesome. And uh, so, yeah, we can do it. I, I think we can do it. It's not like we really can do it, but let's try. Let's try this yeah, thing. I don't know. Uh, let's share a screen. Uh, let's go here and let's go to the folder. And what should I do? Let's, if you say just like open this website, uh, run this command, what's the first thing we have to do to create an Astro website? Uh, an Astro blog? Yeah. Yeah, you could do pnpm create astro. And if you run that command, it will walk you through some stuff. Perfect. Does astro have like a default ESLint configuration or something? Yeah, I know our VS code has prettier pre-configured, so that'll work. Perfect. And, and what if I want to use one of the templates of this thing that... Um, Alien created like I don't have a way of it will be nice to have like use Ooh. one template from our template marketplace and it will just open a new screen with yeah so this is we could do something that I've never really done with someone but if you go to Astro Studio you can like create fancy templates that are good for databases awesome. so we could do that like start here and then yeah if create from template. Perfect. Because a couple of these are what Elian made. So we have a job board and a wait list. These are going to have a ton of opinions baked in, but okay. we can play with them for sure. And so instead of doing a blog, we can just go with, let's let's say, a job board? Yeah. Okay. What do you think it's better, shop board or wait list? I, I don't know. I have a feeling wait list would be simpler. Let's so go we could do things list. to it. Yeah, we'll go with that. Perfect. And then, yes. yeah, it's going to, of course, need GitHub access, and it'll make a repository. And I think this does a lot of nice CI stuff for you. So, oh, and you have to do that, I guess. Glad you've made an account. Perfect. Uh, OK. Oh, well. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. Not too faster. Uh, let's go to interview. 
Yeah. To be clear, what? you don't need GitHub to use Astro if you're following at home. You can just run the CLI if you want to have fun. Just a passkey? Oh, yeah, okay. I'd, I think I set that up for mine too. Use your authenticator app. Yeah, that's what I want to use. Yeah, I was hoping passkeys would be easy, but I still have to like take out my phone and take a photo of a QR code. Okay, let's go back to screen. Perfect. So let's say Astro wait list. Perfect. And the region, let's just leave it North America. Well, we, ha we have South America, but, but it's expensive. So let's keep it to North America. Oh, it shouldn't be expensive. Uh, uh, but yeah. yeah, we do have it. Um, perfect. Well, it takes care of everything for you here. Uh, what will be a waitlist? Like a waitlist for a specific release? Like a... That's like a, a waitlist? Yeah, I mean, th it was definitely born out of our own waitlist where we talked about Studio like, uh, okay. three months out and we just wanted to get a mailing list together. Ah, perfect. So I understand. That's what it should do. Okay, now we have now our have database. The everything. Yes. And what should I do? Yeah. I can't believe there's not a link to go clone that repo right now. Why hmm. is that not here? I'm going to talk to repo? Yeah, click that, but I have a feeling that does something else. Uh, so this is go to settings. That's just, just hit go to settings and it'll open the repos. Oh, no, that's our settings. Right. So I think linking is, yeah. I gave feedback on this and they haven't fixed it. But <laughs> yeah, it auto configures everything in your repo. So okay, you don't let's need go to any GitHub. of those. Just head over to your GitHub and go find the repo. It should just have it. But yes, there is confetti <laughs> for people that notice in the chat. So it must be good. Perfect. So let's copy this. So instead of running pm pm create astro, I just clone this, right? Totally. Perfect. So let's clone this. Uh, astro waitlist. And let's do an install and open. Let's close everything I have in here. Yeah, and there was a question, why build AstroDB when there's so many other DBs? I, I feel you. There are a bunch of other options. Uh, the reason right now is there's just a lot of things put together for you. So right now, if you were in another framework, you would go grab an ORM, something like Prisma. Then you would go grab a host, something like Supabase or um, Terso, if you want to use SQLite. Like, you have to know about those things. And mm. then you put them together. Then you figure out how to get the seed data in there. And then you figure out what the dev experience is going to be. And then you're going. But AstroDB says you don't have to go put three libraries together. It's just one thing. It handles seeding and creating the database and configuring and all of that. Yeah. So like me. a little bit easier to get going if you're in Astro. And yeah. soon there will be more features on top. But yeah, like me itself. saying, hey, AstroDB is awesome. Let's do this in Next.js. And I ended up like expanding a couple of hours trying to do something that has half of the features and work it um, not so good. So yeah, I, I totally understand the why once I try to do it on my own. Uh, perfect. Yeah. So we have everything in here. We have the repository, we installed the dependencies and we have everything on Studio, right? Yes, we do. What should we do next? We should yeah. like create the UI or or what should it look like? The database has what does yep. well, we don't database? have emails yet. Okay, it so, only have emails, right? It looks like that's the field. So Perfect. yes. And you so, can insert dummy emails, so you could totally just do that. Perfect. So now we have to create a UI. Well, the UI doesn't show anything to the user related to information from the database. It's just like post information every time you subscribe to the waitlist, right? Uh, yes. Yes. I think it's a place to gather emails. 
and that that is it. That is the okay. whole thing. <laughs> we can we can do um, an extra part that it's adding the people in the waitlist. Not so secure, but I mean it's a stream that only showcases. So we have a get uh, that gets the information and, and then shows it. Thanks, Lager and Max for the soups. Oh, Lager, one year for you. Awesome, and thank you. Uh, yes. Perfect. So let's just run this for Asteroids Dev, PMPM Dev. Yep. Perfect. And I can also mention, like, if you do dev, it'll create a local copy of the database. And if you do dev dash dash remote, it'll connect to the UI that you're looking at right there. So if you do dash dash remote, you will see the dummy email and whatever other emails you have in production. Okay. We are thinking uh, PMPM dev didn't work. Oh, what? Yeah. Well, let's check new. the package. So now. you have installed? Yeah. Yes. I've never seen this. Yeah, me neither. Uh, Elian, this is your template. I, wow. Huh. Okay. And also, you're I on a Windows machine, which makes me <laughs> wonder. Yeah, I mean, uh, every issue I have, it's probably related to Windows. It's not the first or nor the last time I will have an issue. But I run several Astro DB Astro projects with Windows, and I have not never had a problem. But so let yeah, let's no. do the same thing. Let's remove not modules. Let's remove the lock and let's try again. Let's see, and it might be. I'm thinking of reasons. If you open a terminal in two places, like did you open the VS Code terminal too, or are you just using one terminal? Um, I used this one, but it's the same. It's a PowerShell. I don't have a, a WSL config right now uh, because I removed my previous distribution, yeah. and I think yeah, I think I don't I don't have it right now. But let's try to do it all in the same place. Let's do um, pmpm install and then try to run Astro Dev in here instead of running it in the other one. Okay, now let's dev. Better. At I think. Yeah. What is, what? Uh, no, well, <laughs> perfect. Yeah. Okay, all oh. right, it's up. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, awesome. Um, so this is the wait list. And you said that it's better to just run remote so we target the other one, right? Because this is where where is the DB created? Uh because oh, I, yeah, haven't, it's in... I haven't interacted with it, right? Yeah, so it's in that dot astro folder at the top. It's uh, ignored in your git. Perfect. But yeah, right there. So the whole flow is in development, it just creates a new database based on the schema so that you can play with data without breaking prod. Perfect. But if you want to connect to prod and look at what's in the studio UI, you can add that dash dash remote flag and that gets you connected to production straight away. Okay. So, so if it's... you're doing like scrappy stuff or CMS style stuff, it's nice for that. Okay. So it's Astro dev, but with slash uh, dash dash remote. Yeah. Perfect. So let's add something in here like, um, okay, I have some email. Oh, the contrast in this one. Uh, Crappy.com. Oh, yeah. I'm... Elliot, Perfect. work on your contrast. Yeah, pink so is fun. refresh. And now let's add the list of uh, things in here. Not an specialist on Astro, but I'm glad that you, we have you here. So... Let's see. We go to pages. We have si signups because I saw success in here. And what is signups or how do I get to signups? Yep, oh, okay. It's already done. Yeah. Well, okay. And okay. The probably Houston at Astro.bill, it's in the seed file, right? That's my guess. Yeah. Yeah. It's here. Perfect. So. <laughs> everything is done i mean that was way faster than when i wish I there was more to yeah. that well yeah let, let me think what? we can do the the other one we can do the um, what was the other template oh yeah um the other template was a job board okay probably it also it's it's done 
but we can we can try it. It is indeed. I'm wondering if we're trying to build something, how much time do we have? Um, uh, we have time. What do you want to do? All right. I don't know because I would think like to at least kick the tires going back to let's build a blog and add either a comment section or a like button. That's something that we can just build. Perfect. And oh, and I create a blank project, right? For that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Create empty project. Let's call it Astro blog. I don't know if it's already a Astro blog folder. You never know. Yeah. And um, let's create a new project. And can I use Tailwind and all the fancy things? Or we have to configure all of them? Oh, you just run Astro add Tailwind. Perfect. And you've got Tailwind. It might break some of the blog styles. I don't know. Ah, uh, because it becomes with... The Tailwind C reset? Yeah. I, it's plain CSS, right? I love the confetti. Um, but I have to go to my GitHub. Yep. And I would, I would totally put Tailwind on it too. I, for the longest time, I'm really late to the Tailwind party. But when I'm in a project without Tailwind, I just feel like... I turned it really late to it, it too. Uh, yeah. I was in the Chakra UI, I think, but once that app router got stable uh, and Chakra UI wasn't React server component supported, um, I moved it to Tailwind. So let's do this. We close this, close this. Let's see the database. It doesn't have anything. And we will define the tables in our project, right? Not in the, not in studio. Uh, yes, all of your tables are defined with uh, code. Perfect. Let's see if it runs now when we run dev. I also built a Panda CSS Astro Starter in case that you need awesome. Yeah, I'm really waiting that um, Chakra change like swaps um, emotion with Panda. So it's React Server component. I tried Panda as, as a standalone. And it's nice, but I don't love it yet. Yeah, I I want to, but I can't get into any of the CSS and JS options. Mm. Yeah, well, I this was using style components for a while. This ran ten times faster than the other one. I wonder what, uh, yeah. because I'm guessing it's just styling or V bundling. I don't know what it was. Yeah, so let's go to four three two one. I also like the port. Um, because yeah. 3000, it's being used by so many things. Yep. Oh, I forgot if we're doing blank, we don't have any of the blog stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, we don't have anything. Well, which we, is, we can fine. create the project from scratch and then, we uh, we should do that. Uh, oh, I see what you mean. Like copying stuff over and just, just do that. I mean, we could. Okay, it doesn't have any dependency or configurations that make sense to have. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess it would just be... We can do the uglier, the ugliest blog okay, in the world. Okay, let's make the ugliest blog ever. That's fine. Yeah, so perfect. <laughs> let's just close this one and open. I'm, I'm really used to doing ugly stuff, so it won't for, be my first time. All Perfect. Right. Let's try to run PMP and dev in here. Yeah, Perfect. let's see it. It worked. Okay. And immediately just to get going. Okay, so it's, it's got a database already, so we don't need any of that. That's good. Perfect. So um, yeah. we should create a page that just lists the blog post, right? Or we sh no, we should create the table first. Yeah. Well, yeah, at this point, like, we don't have pages or blog posts, so how do we want to do it? Uh, the way that we've kind of sort of been doing it? Mm. Yeah. Uh, build I was thinking, like, having a table that it's posts, and we only have sure. two pages, like, the listing, and then clicking one and just seeing everything. And a really simple thing, like, title and and content. Uh, content is plain text. It doesn't have doesn't have anything else. 
and we just show Sounds like good to me. three lines of the description. Uh, how do we create that table for that? Yeah, so if we wanted to have like a post table, we could do const post and equals it's define like, table. Like um, uppercase, uh, like Pascal. Yeah, case. that's just the convention we use. And w w should I required. export it or just no? no. I know because I will pass so, it here. Okay. Yes. Okay, and define table. Uh. It's not that copilot, but good guess. <laughs> it will be columns. Columns. Okay. Yeah. Why you think this is CSS? Okay. It's really, really trying to do stuff. That's funny. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, we would have a yeah a title, and this would be column dot, and this will be like a import in a moment. Column like title and then column. Yeah, title and then column. Yep. And that's an import dot text. Text. Perfect. And then yep. I have a description that uh, content that will be um, column dot text too, right? Yep. I have a feeling most things will be text. And I think we are good with, two, with this too. And what about an ID? Should I define it? It's automatically added. Right. So we do have generated IDs, but if you want to do references, like in the moment, we'll probably have like a comment that references a post that it belongs to. Okay. You can add an ID so you can pull off one of those. So you can add an ID. Okay. And if you just use column.number, you can pass inside of the function a little object that has primary key true. And that will do an auto incrementing ID. Okay, perfect. And then I have my comma here. Uh, we are good with this ID, title, and content. And then we can just like because we can you do automatic yep. migrations in in case that we have columns and that kind of things, right? Mm -hmm. Perfect. And if you just put post inside the tables object, we're ready to perfect uh, seed some posts, I guess. Perfect. Uh, but we haven't seen it yet, right? Yeah. We have to... And uh, how do we create um, our registry here? It's db dot... Yeah, db dot insert. Okay. And, and post, and this will just be like an auto import. Ah, uh, but it's not exported, so I should export it, right? No. So Astro colon DB will have the types for all of your tables. They're going to be like generated types. So if you type post, ah, editor tools, uh, it does come from Astro colon DB. I guess okay. it hasn't caught up yet. Ah, this okay. happens like 50, 50 shot. It remembers. And it's know. okay. I restart the server. Um... Is it? Oh, come on, man. <laughs> Well, okay, I so will... your dev server's running, right? Because uh, it's generated types, you do need your dev server running. And I'm uh, and I'm on Windows. Everything can fail in Windows. Uh, I guess so, but it should. Also, look at this, man. Wow. <laughs> okay, that's not uh, us. I swear. Now it okay, works. Okay, now it's there. Strange. Let's try okay. again. Post. Yes. Oh, awesome. Yes. Wow, it worked the first time. Yeah. <laughs> and okay, so almost. But you can take that object there and put it inside of a uh, chain. So it'll be insert post dot values okay. object. So dot values and then pass this. Perfect. Yes. So let's give some more space here. Good. Perfect. So we have this ready. And if we, we have to restart the server to see the content, right? The seed. No. Okay. It will yeah, we got HMR for seeding. Awesome. It's kind of cool. So now let's go to pages index. And now I have to get information from the DB. Let's call it posts. And should I import DB, right? From AstroDB? Yeah. And I'm a newbie on this one. Should be query, should be uh select is so. probably what I do. Okay. You can also do raw SQL, but yeah, we'll do select. Post. It's uh, it's a little different. So it'll ah. be select, 
the things you want to select and then dot from and okay then post. dot from and then post right yes it tries to read like a sql query okay uh, should i call dot all or something on or this is like the posts yeah it will get all if you put in a weight at the front that should give you the data okay perfect so now how sh how do i either i don't remember how to like let's say posts um it's like this is a spell right yeah it is and we fight copilot sometimes because Astro's just a little too new for that language model or something, but it yeah. thinks we're spelt. I don't know why, <laughs> but it's JSX, so you can do post.map. Oh, perfect. Uh, so post.map, and then let's post. And, oh, why? And now, now let's do, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, let's just put everything inside a section, and then let's do this. Then an article, and let's call it dot title and we are good with it well not so good with it uh, we are not so good with it let's do a console log of posting here okay that's a cool little snippet by the way that's nice yeah so it's empty of db do you Let have to restart your db again this is interesting because it seems like the hot reloading isn't working as expected Okay, and can I run the Astro Studio local or something to check what the DB has inside? Oh, right. Yeah, so thinking about debugging tools, uh, the coolest way that I've found, so the answer is no to using the Studio UI, but you can use, well, first off, we could connect to the Studio UI if you want, mm -hmm. or we could use like a SQLite viewer. There's actually a VS Code extension for looking okay. at SQLite files to just look at the table. SQLite viewer, it's this one? I think so. Yeah. It has a... Oh, no, I think it's the... Well, this one might work, too. So let's well, find out. What was the one that... Oh, the third one. It has I think more download, one. so it should be yep. better. Yep, okay. Yeah. It's got to be better. Yeah. Uh, so now let's call SQLite. Oh. Open database. Open database. Um, that's awesome. the one. And now it's like in that file viewer drop down thing. Like in here, there's a SQLite Explorer at the bottom. SQLite Explorer. Uh, it's like the bottom little drawer thing. So ah. if you look at the bottom ah, right perfect. of VS yeah. Code, Content yep, DB. we can click that and we do post. have a post. I and should I show play? table? Yeah. So it's a table with zero entries as okay. expected. So but if perfect. you want to look at a table, there you go. Let's um, just uh, rerun let's this. Just do it. Yes, I'm very disappointed that they each. No, but working. still, it's uh... okay. All right, so I think I noticed something. If you go back to your DB seed file, yeah, I I messed. I was it curious. Up. You've forgotten a wait. Yep, probably that one. And I was curious if it would work. Okay, yeah. so that's good to know. I was wondering if it might work anyways, because I used to just forget awaits and it silently worked, but I guess it doesn't. So we should really like exclamation point in the docs. Do not forget await. <laughs> Perfect. So this is the thing. Now we have a list. Let's do a, just a small thing in here. Um, we can do this several times, right? Sure. And now we have some of them. Let's do, uh, we, well, Let's do, we have to pass an object or a string for style here. Oh yeah, both work. Okay, perfect. So um, let's say display and let's do grid and grid template. I, I don't have autocomplete French. Repeat. Oh yeah, you might not get autocomplete for the object. Fill, man, max. Um, so let's try something like this. And for this one, let's do... This is some brave styling, by the way. I wouldn't break out the repeat autofill <laughs> if I was just <laughs> let's do writing styles. Banning, let's say form. Uh, border, one pixel solid, black. Uh, border radius. I, it, and I don't have autocomplete. 
uh, four. And let's do for this one. Yeah. Also, I should tell you, we have scope styles. Like, you can make a style tag at the bottom of the page and just write it that way. Uh, it, that was way easier than <laughs> my approach. So perfect. I just forgot for a second. <laughs> and why the gap didn't work? Um, why it didn't work? Uh, ooh, the gap. It's a good question. I'm wondering if it's because you put an integer and we don't convert it properly. It's a oh, great gap. Let's see the, the tools. Style tools. Yeah. I'm wondering if you put like four pixels in quotes. Ah, work. okay. Yeah, because that, that transformation is not being... Okay, perfect. Uh, okay. Same thing with uh, the padding in here. Pixels. And this one. Perfect. Yes. Great. These well, are posts. We have a list of blog posts, horrible blog posts. Awesome. Now rounded. It's rounded, right? Four pixels. It's modern. Four pixel rounded. Okay. Let's add more gap to it just because I'm have at the OC. Perfect. Awesome. Um and now we have to add let's just put an H2 for this. And okay. And let's put a P on this with a post content, right? Post content. Yes. Awesome. Uh, we have, like, do we have a global CSS file? CSS? No. I don't think we have anything. But if you want to do a global CSS file, you can put a style tag at the bottom and put is colon global and that okay. will do global styles uh, is global perfect yeah. so let's do uh margin zero padding zero box sizing border box perfect awesome so we have everything we need in here and it will be way easier to have this in a style uh could i have like two style tags right um yes this yeah, should totally. have scope. No, it just auto scopes. Perfect. And now I can do section, display, grid, grid template columns. It takes the other one. Yeah, it, it knows the refactor you're trying to do. Perfect. And for the article, let's do just this. Perfect. I was doing this the other way with Tailwind, and I just started typing in Copilot, just translated all my <laughs> styles to Tailwind. Yeah, <laughs> like that's cool. awesome. And now let's uh, get the body of it. Okay, I don't... Ah, uh, yeah, I have a body here. Thank you. Padding 12 pixels. Perfect. Yeah, we have this one, and let's just imagine that we have one of them that has really... A lot of content that it's just this. Oh no. Oh well, I see. Every it. designer's worst nightmare. <laughs> yeah, sorry, designers. It's my fault. And now the article, it, it's, it will be article B. And um, how is this thing called? Um, like just showing three lines of. Oh, like the oh, line gosh. clamp. There's no. three styles you need, and I don't remember what they are because yeah. there's like text was... overflow ellipses. Line clamp? Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I, it's, it's line I know clamp, text right? overflow ellipses. I know that. No, because that's one for, for the ellipses. I just want to have. You just want the three lines. Yeah. Um... Can you do that? Yep. Well, good. Show. I'm sure okay. number of lines. Thank you for webling. Ah, it was line clamp. Perfect. Uh, but it has to sh oh. have display box or not? Uh, yeah, know. it has to Let's have. Well, let's just do this. And uh, let's try. WebKit box? Yeah, I think what it has to talking? have a display of box. <laughs> not sure about it. What yeah, is a box? Perfect. What? <laughs> okay. Uh, cool. Let's see I if something. I remove this. It doesn't work anymore. And I wow. think that display box works. No, it has to be WebKit box. I think that I can remove this ones. 
Oh, I can't. We're Perfect. Finding out. Okay. Um, well, I've never seen Box. Okay, it needs the WebKit probably because uh, it doesn't have like the um, this tool that transfers the WebKit things to basic yeah. overflow here. Auto prefix. It's also yeah. needed. <laughs> okay. Well, now you learn a new thing. About... Perfect. Yeah. And, wow. And that now, is new to me. And now we have to create a, one of them that it's let's call it ID dot Astro like this. Yeah, totally. perfect. And I will just copy and paste. Sorry, again. Yeah, and uh, you can put it in like a layout component and share it, but you know, yeah, just copy it. I will just change this. Okay, I don't need the body itself. Um, or yeah, I need the body because the layout does. It doesn't have a layout that has the HTML and body, right? Yes, like you could go make a layout component that has it. Or just okay. do this. Yeah, yes. I will and it'll just... be post title. Yeah, we can do it. Um and okay. Ah, and I also need the global one because I don't have a layout. Perfect. Yeah, it makes sense to have a layout later. Perfect. So I need to have a post and then uh select post. I will just remove the log. Perfect. And in here should I get it was something like astro.props, right? Oh, yeah. So if you want to get the parameter, yeah. Um, well, it also depends if you're using a server or not. Like we have get static pads, which I think is the old Next.js convention. Yeah. If you're just doing routes. Okay. Or if you don't want to do that, you just want a server. Like you can use astro.params. So you would do const id equals astro.params. Okay. Um, perfect. And I still have to do the astro.params if I use uh, get static paths, right? To get the params. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, or I think you create the params. This is easier, so let's stick with this. Okay. From po uh, from post, DB sort from post, where, yep. uh, let's mm -hmm. say ID, right? Yeah. And this is going to be funky syntax. So... There's this uh, utility function to say thing is equal to thing, and it's called EQ. So if okay. you just type, yeah, EQ, and you ID. could say ID, and it's not an object. It's actually like where equals. Okay. And uh, yeah. Okay, equals. My brain an really ID. wants an object to work, and <laughs> I understand why it doesn't, but. Like, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, so you, you import the. Or you say post.id. Okay. So post.id equals to id. Yes. And why you don't like it? Oh, it might be mad that like params might be a number or something. I don't know. Okay. That's my guess. Or it might be undefined. So if you just put a bang at the end of it, it'll yeah. work. Okay. Maybe. That'll and what's work. the type of id? Um... Uh, Hover above this so that we don't have all that oh, noise. String, and, or string and undefined. So undefined. So oh, but should... your ID is a number. All the blog posts have number uh, IDs. Perfect. Well. Yeah, so we could just number it. Perfect. That will do. Good. And uh, this is because post might be undefined? Oh, uh, no. Uh, oh, it's an array. So Single. yeah, if you say dot get at the end, that will get the first one. Okay. And now I will just say... Okay, sorry about now, this. Now, I swear it exists, yeah. Yeah, I swear it exists. But where should I put the bang in it? Uh, because get returns oh. a promise. So let's do it everywhere. Correct. Let's just ha actually have the if statement that redirects the user. Whoa. Perfect. Or yes. that's not chaotic enough, is it? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the right answer. Not order. post. Oh. Uh, and... Yeah, you can return redirect. And then home page. Astro.redirect. Uh, let's go to slash. Perfect. Uh, great. If I refresh, I see this. And now I have to add a link. And it's just a plain A, right? Yep. Sorry about this, but I will just wrap the entire thing. Oh my god. That's actually legal. You, you don't have to worry about inline stuff anymore. Um, 
href and let's say can I interpolate in here, right? Like slash post. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Perfect. Oh, oh, beautiful. Wow. Uh, good. Incredible. So let's go to three. Okay. Uh, yeah. I okay. Have... That makes a lot of sense. We have a good error. So let's go to our config and turn this into a server just okay. to let this happen. Of course, like, yes, you might want static routes so you don't have to host a server somewhere, but. I assume we like for sale here, so we should be fine. Okay, yeah, probably. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, I will get fired. So it's just server, right? Yes. Perfect. Server should be good. Good. And now, just oh. for sake of simplicity, let's just remove this. And we should be it. And I should remove the title from here. Um, tuck. And perfect. Beautiful blog post. It all it's wow. only missing one thing. Uh that let's go back. So let's go to common. What the fuck? Let's get the long arrow. Perfect. And let's A. Uh go back. href. Perfect. And now let's go back. Nice. Perfect. Uh it's still missing one thing. On family comic stands. MS. Complete the set. Perfect. Wow. Yeah. Now it's perfect. Who needs Tailwind? Yeah. This is real styling right here. So we have a full blog post and we have our local database. So how do we uh, do this with a hosted one? Yeah. So oh, I know you clone this, but I think you can run some CLI commands. So uh, of course, like you played with your local data, you've got your seed and now you want, or I assume we want all of these beautiful hello Astro posts to appear in the database. To do that, Probably. we can run the seed file into remote. So this is going to be some CLI commands. Okay. So I will just stop the dev server and what should I do? Yeah, if you run pmpm -PM astro login, we can connect. Perfect. Perfect. Cool. And then you can run pmpm -PM astro link to connect to a project. So it's kind of like Vercel link. We definitely look to the Vercel CLI for some inspiration. Uh, us with us. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And it's astro block. Perfect. That's the one. Um, so yeah, now you're connected. So if you wanted to like push up some data, you could run pmpm astro db execute. And this lets you execute any file that you have. Um, ah, oh, okay. Yep. And the path of the files, that should be the, the seed file, right? Yeah, so db slash seed dot ts. Uh, sorry, it's inside SRC, right? No. It's in uh, db, db slash seed. And why? Okay. Seed ds. And then dash dash remote at the yeah. end of the command. Uh, I'm going to push to change that. <laughs> 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 because it trips me up. But that should do it. Perfect. So connect. Oh. Ah! But oh. We... It makes sense because. Ah, well, I no. messed it. Right? I think you need to push up your schema and everything else. So right now it's an empty database and you're pushing data, but the table doesn't exist. We should have a way better error for that, obviously, um, because it doesn't show you what the SQL error was. I'm going to write that down. That should definitely tell you what the SQL error was. Okay. Uh, Faco Lavini says AstroDB push. Do I do that first? Yes. That will push up your schema Did and it. then... Sorry, it's you the can. first time I see the chat. We have so many messages. Sorry for the I people. I know. Uh, sorry for the people that it's asking yeah. questions or saying things. Um, it's a lot of comments on CSS and vintage design. Ah, uh, yeah, good. I know that people love it. So yeah. now Can that I, I have push complete, let's see uh, our AstroDB. Now I have ID title content. Perfect. 
So uh, now I run PMP AstroDB execute DBC, right? Uh, thank you, yes. Faku. I always uh, said Faku Lavini, but I'm not sure if it's Faku Lavini or it's F something Lavini. So I will call you Faku from now on. Uh, perfect. So it connected. And now I have my, well, wait, wait, I have three of them. Yeah, I think it's running the data queries one after the other. Okay. So there are ways to batch all the queries together, but we just copy pasted an insert command. So it's literally just running those. <laughs> Perfect. So, uh, and they're all HTTP is how uh, the queries work. So uh, that's where yes. it is interesting. It takes as long as it does. I wonder if it's because of the region we chose. I that is really interesting. Because it'll wait for each one. So if it's like each query takes 200 milliseconds for the region, you would just wait 200, 200, 200. Hmm. And it could be parallelized, right? Also? Absolutely. Um, so the simplest way is values uh, accepts an array. So you can just pass values and then the array of things. Yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, the chat also said, it's probably because I'm awaiting, awaiting. I should do a promise all with one await and that will be batch the thing. Yeah. But if you um, use values with an array, it will also cut down on network requests. Perfect. Because, yeah, every query is a request. Yeah. And it's good to cut down HTTP stuff. I say this because uh, our CEO, he went on a live stream and did a Canvas drawing example, and every pixel was seeded <laughs> with an individual query. <laughs> And we waited for hundreds of pixels to be drawn onto the screen. I was like, why did you do this? Awesome. It's so well, funny. I think so it I totally use that makes example sense. Yeah, to have this uh, behavior with this ugly code. If we fix this, uh, it will behave correctly. So now if we run pmpm uh, PM -PM dev remote, it should target the remote database, right? Perfect. So if we come here and refresh, well, we don't have to refresh. We get the actual value. So if I go to here and say, hello, whiteboard, and I refresh, come to here, refresh, and we have the thing. Hey. Perfect. So yes. we did the, the full flow. We created a really beautiful block. We connected it with the Astro database locally. We modified, seeded, and all that, those things, and then went for uh, the hosted version. And it works. And it works. Ah, it was. Yeah. It was awesome. Well, let's see if some of the messages. I will just jump on the ones that has because my application has like a star on the ones that has like a question mark. So if someone has any questions right now, just sorry about not seeing the old ones, send the new ones so we can go through them. Uh, do you think build us from mobile? Do you mean like for mobile app development? Yeah, exactly. Because if so, like people have done it, I wouldn't do it because I don't know what that looks like, but there are ways to like take a web view and just put it in an app. I know Ionic has ways to do that. I would still probably use React Native, but it has been many years since I tried playing with mobile apps, so yeah. I don't know what the state is. I had really bad experiences with Expo and React Native lately. I I yeah really didn't like it. Uh, I used it some years ago, and it was good but okay yeah does astro have ai help in the documentation or something oh yeah that's a good question we don't talk about um wiring up ai tools we were floating the idea of should we just have an astro ai package that just wraps around chat gbt seems mm -hmm. like everyone's doing it uh we don't right now if you i do know that our support channel uses ai totally unrelated but you can go in there and ask a question and if yeah. no one responds, a bot will help you. And that's actually been pretty helpful for us. So yeah, if you want to use AI, I mean, for cell AI, that's an NPM package. That should work super well because Astro runs on the server. So 
that would probably be what I try first. Perfect. Um, do, do, ben Holmes, is this work with on premise TV? Ooh, on premise. Yeah. So, like self hosting, I assume is what you mean. Yeah. That I... is something we've thought about. Yes. Because right now, if you want to host your Astro database, you go to Astro Studio, and we own the servers that are hosting all of the SQLite files and distributing them to multiple regions. It helps with read, write, all of that good stuff. But it might be prohibitive to use Astro for hosting your company's data. For whatever reason, you can't get through to red tape. So we've been thinking about a self-hosted option. But first, we want to get our own infrastructure in a place where we feel really good about it. And then we can open source how that infrastructure is set up so you could also do it on-premise. It's just very early to have those opinions hmm. right now. But it was open source is in our DNA. Yeah. yeah, yeah, two weeks ago. DB is still pre-1.0. Uh, you don't want to know the code that was written the night before. Like we're, we're definitely getting a hang on how all this stuff works, but it feels pretty good so far. Awesome. Uh, I missed a bit of the stream. This is just TS plus Astro or I'm missing something. Yeah, we we don't have any framework related code and it's just Astro and TypeScript. Yep. Uh, bam, 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 and perfect. Astro, Tauri. Oh no, I don't like Tauri. Okay, okay. It, people are trying that. It, people, but okay, people that's an Astro team Tauri. member. That's why. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> alien. It's the template guy. Uh, thanks, Ben and Gons, for the great master class. Thank you. It it's it's it does it does work with okay, this is I mean running on containers or our servers. Perfect. Yeah. Correct. It does not run on your servers. It is ours. Perfect. But we want to work towards that. That's my answer. Perfect. So no on prem yet. Yeah. But stay tuned. Hmm. And question, does the local database serve to help us in development or does it serve to replicate it in the AstroDB database? I wasn't entirely clear to me, but it looks amazing nonetheless. Thanks for the stream. Um, I think that both, right? I mean, it serves for, if you want to see your remote database once you're going to go to production, you just use it. And in development, you can use it to not break production, as you said, right? Right. Yeah, the local database file is just spun up every time you start the dev server. So it literally like just dumps whatever it has and reseeds it. So you can just throw terrible config ideas at it, throw terrible seed data, and you're not breaking anything. Yeah. And then when he's talking about like replication and all of that, that is going to be talking to like the Astro Studio service. So that way it's connected, it's persisted across deployments, and you don't have to worry about like, oh, I redeployed my site, but is my SQLite file handled correctly? Mm. No, the SQLite file is this separate thing yeah. once you go to production. I find quite uh, strange that it resets every time you run the server if you already have a database. Um, because imagine that you okay. were working on some things like titles or you were like doing things on your application. I expect it to seed when I don't have anything on my database. Uh, it will always seed, or do you have a flag to not seed when you run? Right. At the moment, it does tear down and reseed in development. Of course, it's not going to hurt your production data. Okay. So if you do dash dash remote, like that works. But yeah, that feedback has come up a couple times. We wanted to have a pretty polarizing stance to see how the community took to it. Okay. And I could totally see like persist the database between dev server runs. Because you could run into a weird issue like I have to restart the dev server, but I was playing with this session and I don't want to lose it. Like hmm. that shouldn't block you. The you file can... is already there, so we can just not delete it. Yeah. <laughs> and you not... can still do in the seed file. Um you have this, right? So you can do something like this in here. Um if not pause dot length and do this, right? Right. I think we recreate the tables on startup though. So uh, okay. that's something we do need to change the behavior of. Because okay. we don't want like duplicate data or other things, but a simple no seed flag or persist database or something would solve it. So Perfect. Okay. Totally on the table to just be added as a feature. Awesome. 
Well, I think uh, that will be it. Uh, will Astro replace next year? Yes, I, I think this question is being made in every stream. Uh, it, it will. Um, yeah, guaranteed. Yeah, guaranteed. Come um, back here three years. Yeah. Ben, again, thanks for being here, for explaining us, for guiding me on creating this application and answer all the questions, not just me, but the people in the chat had. Uh, and it's also nice to have again a stream in English. I have to I have to practice my English sometimes, so it's easy it's easier when you have to do like fun things. Yeah. Um, where can people find you? Uh, see the whiteboard videos. Something you want to say to the people in here? Uh, yeah. To find the videos, I can totally share a link. But I'm all over. Uh, YouTube and Twitter. I've been told it's good to talk about the YouTube since we are trying to do some more long form content over there too. So if this was at all helpful to you, I try to do more content out in the world. Right now I've been on a tailwind tear. So if you're interested in tailwind content, I've been doing some shorts on that over there. And otherwise, yeah, join the Astro Discord. I'm around there fixing bugs and a um, number of other people in this chat are going to be over there. Yeah, there's so. a lot of people in the chat from the Astro there's team. So if, if you want to join the Astro Discord, you can go to the Astro page and below in the footer, you have a, the Discord button. So you can join in there. Also, they're perfect. Uh, just, uh, ben just share the, the link for it. So again, Ben, thanks for being here. And we will try to have more streams about Astro uh, instead of everything nice. on Next.js. So thanks again, and we will bother you if you, we have any questions. Oh yeah, definitely bother me. It was super fun coming on here. And I love actually having like a whiteboard thing to do. Like that never comes up. We pull up the Excalibur draw, but no, I wanna <laughs> wanna diagram stuff. Yeah, we, we have you have the, the chance to to draw in like not just happy faces, but also a table. So oh, yeah. it was <laughs> it was awesome. Uh, Good stuff. Ben and people. Uh, see you next Tuesday and thanks for...